In today's video, we're taking a look at how to go from a 12 volt system to a 24 volt system, easy and simple. This is so easy, anyone could do everything that we use on the video. We're gonna leave a link on the description. Don't forget to like the video and subscribe. That does help us out a lot. Thank you. So you woke up today and the first thing that you said to yourself is, we need more power. Power and power. Because consuming less is not an option. Don't worry, here at the Statabox team, we've got your back. A few blocks away, but a back is a back. And if you've been following this solar power series, we've been trying to show how to go from a small system to a bigger system. We started with a P. WM 200 watt kit, which consisted of two 100 watt panels. Then we upgraded from 200 watts to the PWM's maximum of 400 watts, which was four 100 watt panels. Next, we went from a lead acid battery to a lithium battery. Then we went from a PWM charge controller to a MPPT charge controller. And we went with the Victron Smart 150 slash 45. And the reason we chose that one because we noticed it's upgradable because it can handle 12 volts, 24 volts, 36 volts, or 48 volts. And with the higher the voltage of your battery system, the more watts you can have in solar panel. With 12 volts, it has a maximum of 650, with 24 volts, 1300, 36 volts, 1950, and 48 volts, 2600. So going from a 12 volt to a 24 volt and changing the charge controller, it let us go from 400 watts, which is four 100 watt panels, to Renegade. 320 by facial panels 1280 watts keeping us under the 150 volts and remember the most important thing when going from a 12 volt system to a 24 volt system is that you want your nominal voltage coming in to be at least 5 volts higher than the battery voltage and this is according to the Victron owner's manual. So that means for 24 volts, you want a minimum of 29 volts coming in. So to go from 12 volts to a 24 volt system, one of the things that we need to replace is the inverter. So before we had the 12 volt Renegy 1000 watt inverter, pure sine wave inverter, and now we're upgrading to the Renegy 2000 watt 24 volt pure sine wave inverter. And remember, no matter which brand you use, the technique will be the same. And with this particular inverter, Inverter, we get a wired remote control and as you can see the end of the wire it's just like a phone jack we're gonna connect it where it says remote then we're gonna click our on and off button to the right side where it says remote and now you can control your inverter with the press of a button we get screws and anchors we get a pair of three feet three gauge inverter wire in this case we chose to upgrade to one off wire if you want to check out the size cut strip crimp and install shrink tube and also the lugs on the wire, you can check our initial solar system kit video to learn how to. We'll leave links on the description. And now that we got the prequel information out the way, we're ready to start. The first thing that you wanna do is turn off your inverter. If you have a switch that cuts the power to the inverter, we wanna turn that off. If you have a breaker that stops the energy flow from the solar panel to the charge controller, we wanna go ahead and turn that off. You can also cover your solar panels. If you have a solar panel disconnect switch or breaker, we want to turn that off as well. So we also added this solar disconnect in case we need to work on the wire that goes from our solar panel to our charge controller. And in this case, because our charge controller can now handle a max of six gauge wire, we did upgrade and having that PV disconnect did help. And installing that is just like installing the DC breaker. You can check out our video on how to install the breaker on our initial solar kit install. Links in the description. If you have a switch that goes from the battery to the charge controller, we wanna go ahead and switch that off. We did wire the panels in series parallel, meaning each two in series, and then both groups coming in parallel to the charge controller. So that means when we have two panels in series with an open circuit voltage or VOC of 30.43 volts, would make a total of 60.8 six volts. So that means we are well below the 150 volts that the Victron can handle, but above the five additional volts that the 24 volt system needs 
for the MPPT to operate correctly. And then we take the two pairs of series connections and connect them in parallel. Then we add the apps, which is the ISC of 13.09 times two. It's a total of 26.18 apps. And now that we filled your brain with data, as you can see, we're removing the old inverter for the new inverter. And for that, the first thing that we did is remove the wires going to the inverter. And on the positive side, what we have is going from the inverter, first the fuse, then a battery switch, and then it goes to the battery. We also removed our negative wire that was going to our battery shunt. And once we place the new inverter, we place the back. And a pro tip, is always a good idea to have fuses or breakers or switches. Not only the fuses protect or the breaker, but let's say something like a battery switch. If at any time you want to work on the inverter or remove it, you just turn off the switch and you're able to work on your system without having to disconnect anything else. And the same goes for breakers at any point in your system. You can check out our initial solar system kit install to see where we place fuses, breakers, or switches, as well as how we determine the size of each. So now we've gotten to the fork in the road. This is the second thing that you're gonna need after the inverter. And that is either an additional 12 volt battery or a single 24 volt battery. Having a single battery is a lot easier to connect. Some may say that the advantage of having two batteries, if one goes bad, you only have to replace one. And if you remember, just like before, if we connect the batteries in series, it would add up the voltages. So 12 plus 12 would be 24. If we would do a parallel, then you would have the same 12 volts, but the amp hours would add up. So in this case, we're using a 12.8 volt, 280 amp battery, meaning when we place them in series, we're going to go from a 12 point eight volt battery to a bank of 25.6 volts. And the amp hours would stay the same at 280 amp hours. If we were doing parallel, then the volts would stay the same at 12.8 volts and the amp hours would become 560 amp hours because the amps get adding up. So in this particular case, we're adding a second battery. And according to many manufacturers, when connecting batteries together, you want to have the batteries of the same brand the same voltage, the same amp hours, and going a little bit further, some say you want to have them of the same age. Or at least, let's say after you bought the new one or the original 12 volt one, you don't want to buy the second one more than six months apart, or some say more than a year apart. So it's always best practice to buy them together, or at least under six months apart or a year apart. And remember, this is all going to depend on the cycle differences between each other. And the reason for this is that having different capacities can overcharge some batteries and undercharge the others, which can cause premature aging, as well as batteries that aren't from the same age may charge and discharge at different rates, even if they are of the same make and model. In this particular case, our batteries are just a few months apart, at the most three months, and with little heavy use for now. So this is why the next step is very crucial. If you're using two batteries, we want to make sure that we charge them to 100% each. In this case, we're using the Victron Smart Charger 30 amps for 12 volt batteries, including lithium. And it is the same one we use on the video going from lead acid to lithium battery. Once we have uh, both batteries completely charged, we can take the additional step of letting them rest until they get to their resting voltage, which for lithium 12 volt batteries is 13. 0.6 volts before we connect them in series. But no matter if you want to wait or connect them now, a key step that we like to do is take our multimeter and check the voltage of each battery to see that they match. In this case, we're getting 13.4 volts on each. According to the manufacturer, they can have a maximum difference of 0.1 volt. Anything greater than that, then they should not be connected until you get the same number or at least that number of difference. And you can usually get that by letting them rest or by charging them to 100%. And now that we made sure that both batteries have the same voltage or close enough, we're ready to wire them up in series. We're gonna take our negative wire coming from our battery shunt and connect that first. And remember, once you feel it tight, that's good enough. You can always verify with your owner's manual for torque specs. But you know, we like to do on the stat of 
box theme is eyeball it, especially with our eyes closed. And we mean both of them. Next, we're going to connect our wire that's going to make the series connection going from the positive wire to the negative wire of the other battery. And in this case, we're using a 2 aught gauge wire. And we like to start off by hand and then finish with the wrench. And once we feel it tight, that's good enough. Next, we're going to connect our positive wire on the second battery. And in our case, is the positive wire going to the inverter, the positive wire going to the charge controller, and the small positive wire going to the battery shunt. And in between the battery and the wires, we're going to use a terminal fuse block the size of fuse for your particular system. You can always verify with your owner's manual for that particular information. If in your case, you only have one wire going to a bus bar, then you would connect that one, the positive one. Always remember the ancient technique passed down generation to generation of lefty loosey, righty tighty. And once you feel it tight, that's good enough. You never want to over tighten. You can always verify with your owner's manual for specific system torque specs. And we say this because this can vary widely from manufacturer to manufacturer, or even in same brand, you can have different models with different torque specs. And now you've done it. You're one step closer to victory. You have a 24 volt system. We can go ahead and turn on first our switch that powers our charge controller. and. Remember, a pro tip, you always want to turn on first your charge controller before turning on your solar system breaker or even inverter breaker. That's going to help protect your system. And if you're disconnecting, then you always want to disconnect your charge controller or power to the charge controller last. In this particular system, we're going to connect to the Victron app and go on the gear icon or settings and then battery. And then we're going to choose our battery voltage. We're going to go from 12 to 24. In this particular case, it gives us a pin to manually add. So we know we're not doing this by mistake. And we're 100% sure that we're changing from 12 volts to 24 volts. Now that our solar charger is configured, we can go ahead and turn on our solar panel breaker or solar disconnect as well as our switch for our inverter. Let's say if in your case, you have a battery monitor or battery shunt and you want to reset it to 100%, you can do that on the app or in this Renegy monitor, what we like to do is hold the down button for a few seconds, get it to 0%, and then press the up button for a few more seconds and get it back to 100%. You're going to notice right away that your battery monitor is going to read the new voltage, this case 26.8, and then we can go inside the system and change the parameters according to our specific system. And we've noticed with this new system and new solar panel input number, we've gotten high of 1,076 watts, 968, 892 from a maximum of 1280. And out of those four days, two of them have been cloudy and raining and the rest have been cloudy and a weather of 80 degrees Fahrenheit to 85 degrees Fahrenheit. So we can see that in cooler weather and if we get sunny and no clouds, we can probably see higher numbers or even closer to the 1280s, which is the array's maximum. And this is coming from the 400 watt array that was seen 349, sometimes 370, 302, 310, 335. And the reason to be able to add more solar panels is that you can get to your energy goals a lot faster, charge that battery a lot quicker, as well as more battery capacity. And now you've done it. You can pat yourself on the back for a job well done. Don't forget, if you like the video, please give us a thumbs up. That really helps. If you have any questions, place them in the comment section below. Below. Either someone on the Statabox team or someone on the YouTube community can help you out with an answer. Don't forget to subscribe, follow us on social media. Thank you for watching, and here's a link to our latest video.